I'm talking today with De nurse Debbie Toomey and physical therapist Kristen DeYoung, all about the December Falls Prevention and Stress Management Programs for Aging Adults happening on the first and third Tuesdays at 10 o'clock, live on Zoom and broadcast across the library's Facebook and YouTube channels. Um, Debbie's been doing these for some time and Kristen will be joining us on December 1st uh, to talk specifically from her expertise as a physical therapist to help us stay safe and healthy. I hope you enjoy our conversation. I'm looking forward to offering more of the falls prevention and stress management um, programs for Quincy Public Library and wanted to be able to switch it up and make it more interesting from time to time uh, by inviting some guests. So um, Kristen DeYoung is going to be one of the guests in December and I can't wait to have her on. Kristen. Yeah, I'm happy to be able to attend. Um, I'm looking forward to speaking with you all about a little bit about what I do day to day um, as a physical therapist, um, you know, working with people um, who are aging and people who are trying to deal with learning how to be active during quarantine right now. So a lot of challenges facing us right now. Um, so I'm happy to be able to offer a little bit of info for you and a little bit of interaction as well. I'm really looking forward to it. Kristen, it looks like you're actually in the medical center right now as we talk. That does not look like a home backdrop behind you. This is not. This is uh, one of our treatment rooms in my uh, outpatient clinic here at Tufts. So uh, I've got my little room here um, where we do a lot of, a lot of uh, physical therapy. Well, thanks for making some time to talk to us. Um, because you're in a clinic, does that mean you have special tools there that like people need to go to clinics to use? Or do you usually, I mean, help people figure out how to use the, just the tools around them to do physical therapy? So there are some some different pieces of exercise equipment that you find, you know, in clinics or gyms or things like that. But a lot of what we do, um, we design so people are able to do it on their own at home. So there's a lot of things you can do with just the things you have around your your home that um, can help you get stronger, help you gain balance, help you be more active because it's where you are every day. So it's a uh, a little more practical to have you working out with the things around your home. So definitely there's there's equipment in a PT clinic, but um, we make it so you can do everything at home. I would imagine that one of the things that you really, uh, that would be hard, especially in these times, is motivation. How do you encourage somebody to stick with them? I mean, it's one thing to try to stretch a few times, but we know that really results come through sustained effort. And sometimes I find personally it can be boring. Um, like, a, how do you keep somebody engaged? How do you encourage people to, to take care of themselves um, without letting our minds wander and just get distracted by the Oreos that are over in the cabinet? Absolutely. Very, very challenging. Um, what I find best is, you know, I have a buddy that keeps me accountable for things. I say, all right, so today I've got to do my exercises and okay, so we can get on a Zoom. I exercise with my friends on Zoom. Okay, one, two, three, go. Um, definitely have done some of that over this quarantine. Um, and really setting a schedule for yourself, making the time every day. You know, it's easier if you set the same time each day. Okay, every day when I get up. Uh, when I get out of bed, I'm going to put the coffee pot on. And while the coffee's brewing, I'm going to do a couple of my exercises. And every day after lunch, I'm going to do my, my couple laps around my hallway to get my exercise in. So just kind of planning in that regular time every day can be helpful as well. I've heard, I forget what the exact number is, but I've heard people talking about, um, you know, how we're such creatures of habit. And then if you just do something like X number of times, you can make it a habit. And then it just becomes second nature. Yeah. So typically about 30 days to make something a habit. So if you can okay. stick with it for that 30 day time period, um, you know, it's more likely to then just be incorporated into your daily life. And it's, yeah. it's actually something you miss when you don't do it after that. I can relate to that. There's been times when I was doing a lot of exercise and yeah, you get to, yeah, it, it, it is something you like, yeah, something's missing. Good. Yeah. yeah. What do you do? Uh, regular exercise? You mentioned that you're doing zoom classes, what kind of stuff? I mean, obviously it's most important that we do whatever speaks to us personally, but Exactly. You've got to find something that is meaningful and something that you want to do for yourself. So I'm a runner. I enjoy running. So um, even in um, pandemic times, I put on my mask, I go outside and I'll do, you know, a lap around my neighborhood, mm. uh, plan out the time for that. Uh, there are some great online classes now, some free ones you can find on YouTube or things like that, where you're able to do some stretches and some other exercises as well. So I usually throw in a little bit of, um, of stretching during the week and a little bit of strength training in my apartment during the week too. That's cool. Debbie, what do you like to do? How do you, I know you keep fit too. Mm. Your favorite. I love to walk. 
And I also love to do yoga. So mm. uh, yoga in the morning, I find, especially when uh, after getting up uh, from a long night's sleep, my low back, uh, being a nurse for over 30 years, the, the back uh, takes a lot of strain. Mm. And I can uh, vouch for the physical therapy department at Tufts because I was a patient there when I had my plantar fasciitis for from being on my feet a lot as a nurse. So uh, I was a patient of theirs, so a patient um, patient for a few months to um, help exercise and loosen all that. So walking is very good for me. I love it. And also lots of yoga. Mm. Mm. Well, those are definitely good things to do. Mm. I love to walk as well. I've been enjoying hiking recently and finding different trails to go and walk around on. And um, I'm a bicyclist myself, as some folks know. Uh, it's always fun. It gets a little hard as it gets dark uh, so early in uh, these days to, to get as many. And it, my toes get cold as it's cold outside, I find. Mm -hmm. But I, I, the last few weekends, at least, I've been able to go out and do some serious miles with some friends, which is, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Very cool. And kayaking, I can't wait for the seasons to change again so I can do that. But, you know, I did just get, uh, my, my daughter and I picked up some snowboards for a song uh, this last weekend. So uh, hopefully we'll get some snow soon and we can spend some time in the slopes for those of us who enjoy that kind of thing. That's great. That's yeah. great. I love snowshoeing during the wintertime, too. There's some great trails for snowshoeing if we can get some snow cover, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely enjoy doing that. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. And stretching ahead of time is really good. So I know that's something, Debbie, that you have, you've done every week or every time we've brought people together. And Kristen, I'm sure that's something, I mean, something you've mentioned. Um, so, mm -hmm. yeah. so people can certainly join. They can go and look for these past programs. And we'll be recording uh, this program. So if people really like something, then they can... You know, if they don't have that buddy to connect with on Zoom or, you know, they're busy, they can just be, we can be good to ourselves and just tune in and, and come watch some of the instruction exercises and, and maybe, you know, Debbie and Kristen, you can be our buddies for, you know, virtually. So yeah. absolutely. That's great. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. Well, um, I wonder if you have any uh, suggestions. I know we did a, uh, the, one of the last programs that we had in November was all about being grateful uh, and, and about the role of gratitude um, and how that's important in your kind of rounds. And, and I think that's, you know, part of kindness. Kristen uh, and Debbie, I wonder, uh, as we wrap up our conversation here, if you have any thoughts for folks that are going through the holiday season um, and special things to be think, thinking about, um, you know, especially a holiday season when we're in the middle of a pandemic and not able to see each other um, and, and do what we've done in a lot of holiday seasons in the past. I'm definitely going to be doing a lot of um, uh, videos with family members because my family members are out of state. So I'm going to spend some time with them and make sure we get uh, some, some, some good quality time too. Um, I enjoy going out and sort of taking my own time as well. So grateful for the ability to be able to, you know, walk around the city here and just kind of see everything, the, the life that's going on here too. Nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's for me, I've been asking my family, what's the one thing that they want to get out of the holiday, knowing that we are going to be doing something different this year, because of uh, the, the, the numbers that need to, uh, that we need to maintain indoors. So uh, knowing that we can't have a big family celebration, asking them, what's that one thing that if we did it on Thanksgiving or Christmas will make a big difference in the holiday? And also um, looking into online remote games that can be done via Zoom that, mm. um, you know, we could, you know, we could do with other family members at the same time, real time. So I've been uh, researching that and there's been a lot of fun things like chess or categories, bingo. So, you know, we you should can talk. Still... I, I can share a link with you. Right? Yes. Early in the <laughs> pandemic, we had, I had some friends and we were getting together uh, and we discovered somebody who was curating this long list of online games. I'll share a link with you. And yes. Anybody who's interested, I'll share with all the librarians here so that we can share it with everybody. Uh, because it's be rather cool. amazing the number of games that are available uh, yeah. for free on the internet for, for Zoom and, and other kind of, you know, sharing with friends. It's very Yeah, cool. love it. Love it. Thank yeah. you. Kristen, Debbie, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for, for helping contribute to Quincy and to the greater community and for helping us all figure out ways that we can be healthy uh, and safe um, and take care of ourselves and encourage each, each other to take care of you know, of each other. So I really appreciate your time and your energy and your efforts and uh, looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you, Clayton. First, thank you. <laughs>
I hope you've enjoyed my conversation just now. I've been talking with Nurse Debbie Toomey and Kristen DeYoung, a physical therapist, both with the Tufts Medical Center. Debbie will be running both of the programs uh, for falls prevention and stress management for aging adults happening on the first and third Tuesdays of December. Uh, starting at 10 o'clock live on the library's Facebook and YouTube pages, and you can participate uh, by joining us on Zoom. Go out to thomascranelibrary.org uh, to find our calendar and all the login details. I hope you enjoyed our conversation, and I hope you will join us for these great programs. Stay safe and healthy, everybody.